comment on the reports that uh, the U.S. informed the Ukrainian government that an attack could happen as soon as tonight, and that um, Kharkiv is probably is possibly um, you know in the line of attack that it could be directly um, you know that the Russian troops could roll over the border and attack Kharkiv tonight. What I'll say about those reports is they are entirely consistent with what we have been saying for some time now, uh, that Russia has amassed forces along Ukraine's borders in Belarus, uh, positioned the assets, the heavy weaponry, uh, the soldiers, the service members it would need to undertake uh, an invasion of Ukraine uh, at a moment's notice. That has been true for some time now. Uh, so. For several days now, uh, we have said the invasion is potentially imminent, meaning it could start today, it could start tomorrow, uh, it could start next week. What we haven't seen, is, and this goes back to Simon's question, is any indication that the Russians are backing away from this. We have not seen any data points that alleviate the grave concern, the profound concern that we've been expressing for some time, yet, uh, some time now. Uh, so the invasion remains potentially imminent. Uh, and R Moscow is poised uh, to do precisely the kinds of things that uh, you just uh, outlined. Can I just follow up really quickly also on something Simon said uh, that you and Simon discussed? You know, with this notion of diplomacy still on the table, and now you're saying that it's possible that, uh, you know, Donbass is obviously being attacked, if not uh, actually, then rhetorically, that the Russians are now, um, you know, uh, uh, acknowledging or recognizing their autonomy and sovereignty. So how, how can you then justify discussions about diplomacy when this is underway? I mean, you keep on saying that the Russians have to show that they're serious, they have to de-escalate, but could they pause things right now and possibly engage in talks with the U.S., or do significant sort of scale back have to happen? Do we have to see troops falling back before that's discussed? Is Donbass being regarded differently from the rest of the country? So you heard from uh, our colleagues at the White House and, and others here over the course of the day yesterday, including the secretary, that the invasion is beginning. Uh, and when we uh, spoke about the beginning of the invasion, we talked about several developments over the course of uh, the 20, that 24-hour period. Uh, Vladimir Putin's recognition uh, of the so-called uh, DNR and LNR, uh, uh, the order that he conveyed to the Ministry of Defense uh, to deploy forces into the Donbass, uh, the authorization uh, that he sought to send Russian service members uh, into service extraterritorially, uh, the rhetorical assault, essentially, that we saw uh, President Putin deliver uh, against Ukraine, denying Ukraine uh, its sovereignty and essentially uh, its right to exist. Those are what we've seen. Those are what we've heard. Uh, but as I just mentioned, uh, there are some things, many things, in fact, uh, that Russia is poised to do at a moment's notice uh, that we have not yet seen. A large-scale invasion, an assault on urban centers, uh, the human rights abuses, the potential war crimes, the atrocities uh, that uh, we have great concern uh, could take place. Uh, these are all things that we want to prevent. So you asked the question, uh, why would we engage in diplomacy? Well, we would engage in diplomacy to save lives. We would engage in diplomacy to prevent an all-out war. Uh, this is a war that would be brutal. It would be costly. It would be, in many ways, devastating uh, for the Russian Federation, of course, for the Ukrainian people. And the way in which the Russian Federation would wage this war, you heard from the National Security Advisor, it would not be uh, a uh, type of conflict that you might ima imagine over territory uh, o or over concrete ends. Uh, you heard the National Security Advisor make the case that this would be a war waged against the Ukrainian people uh, to subjugate them, to crush them, uh, to exact, in many ways, uh, revenge. Uh, this is what we want to prevent. Uh, so we are ready to engage, uh, but we need a partner. We need a negotiating uh, uh, counterpart that demonstrates seriousness of purpose. We have not seen that from the Russian Federation. In fact, uh, we have seen the opposite at every turn. Andrea. Uh, 